Somebody here? Oh, it's me. <laughs> okay. I love you too. <laughs> Thank you, Mark. He's open. Anyway, welcome to the 26th Annual Pinnacle Awards. Here in the beautiful campus of High Point University, in the Nito and Mariana Cobain sports facility that I scream and yell at over here for the basketball team and the conference center right here. Isn't this beautiful, this room? It's unbelievable. And what a great looking audience. You are, all the beautiful people of the industry are here. All the great design talent. I mean, nothing happened to this building, okay? Because we love you all. So first I'd like to make a, a quick introduction. And this is of the ISFD Board of Directors. Those Board of Director members who are here, if you would, please stand up at this time. Board of Directors of ISFD, there they are around the audience. Our president over here. And then a very hardworking team of judges for this year's Pinnacle Awards. And they are here, as most of them this week, this evening. So uh, let me announce the judges for the Pinnacle Awards 2022. Please stand up, those of you who are here. There's two or three, some are admitting they are, some are not. There we go, okay, yeah, very, very good. I'd also, we have an exhibition going on in a building directly across the street from Innovation, uh, called Innovation and in Design, across the street from Congdon Yards. And it's called Innovation and in Design. It's been going on through market and uh, 48 wonderful student and professional makers from around the country became the finalists for this competition and all their product is on display over in that building. There'll be free coffee there tomorrow and uh, feel free if you, before you bug out of town, you might want to stop by and see what's going on there. But our volunteers for the last couple of weeks are here with us this evening. Caleb Collins, Dontre Mathis, would you please stand up? Luan Butler and Davis Price, Come on out from back there, Davis. Welcome. Each of these people have their own businesses here in High Point. Caleb is a maker designer himself, so meet him later after the event. And then Davis is an interior design major here in High Point University, so we're happy to have them with us. Uh, also, I'd like to take a moment and thank our sponsors for the evening. They are Furniture Today, Thank you for support. The International Market Centers. Nice Continental Hardware. High Point Market Authority. Furniture Design Studios, Sherwin-Williams. Pinnacle Bank. I have to say that because they'll, they'll cut me off on my checking account, so. Uh, Candle College of Art and Design at Ferris, University, Ferris State University. Where are you? Right there. The president of the university, please stand up. Congratulations. And we thank her. We thank, we thank them because they are a brand new bronze sponsor of the Pinnacle Awards this year and a great supporter. Thank you very much for being here. Uh, and then Leggett and Platt. Leggett and Platt, you guys are here. Where are you? Somewhere, there they are, okay. And uh, some guy's name, Element Studio, I think they do productions, who knows, but they're great and they're awesome. There they are back there, all right. And uh, without further ado, on with the show. That moment when you walk into a room and something some shape or color, some exquisitely executed finish or delightful detail doesn't just catch your eye, but captures your imagination. Those moments don't just happen. They are the product of great design. They begin in the minds and on the work tables of the people in this room. The designers and manufacturers whose ideas shape our homes. Thank you for joining us tonight to celebrate the designs that will create some of tomorrow's most memorable moments. And the people who create them. All right. 
Give me a second. Okay, let me take this in here. I'd maybe do a selfie. I don't think so. Uh, I'm Steve Wilcox. I am the current president of the International Society of Furniture Designers. Uh, I, want to I also want to thank you all, as John did, for our corporate sponsors, our educational sponsors, individual uh, professional members, student members, affiliate, and associate members. Thank you so much for being here. Your financial support and participation, I want to really emphasize that word with, with our association, allows us to promote the role of, design, of the designer in this fantastic industry. That, as John said, this is the 26th anniversary of the Pinnacle Awards. The Pinnacle Awards and now the Innovation and Design Awards for the maker designers are two of the primary events sponsored by our society to promote excellence in design and the role of the product designer in the collaborative process of bringing furnishings to the people. All right. Um, but it was not always this way. Let this sink in a minute. Um, but I keep this little thing posted in my office. It's from an Antiques Magazine article from the 1980s. I would love to have that issue, but I don't. And so I'm going to just read it for everyone here. It may appear to some that designs for furniture are a very inferior branch of art, but they certainly are a branch of it, and anyone who carries such designs to a high pitch of excellence and who contrives to raise the character of the nation in such respects is certainly entitled to notice from a journal devoted to the fine arts like our own. Now, with friends like that, we don't really need enemies as creative professionals. You know, can I get an amen for that? But uh, um, George Bullock, uh, and take that name down and, and Google it later, okay? Just so you can see what this man did. Um, he was a cabinet maker in England from about 1783 to 18, 1818. I've seen examples of his work, Victorian Albert, British Museum. Um, he was no slouch in designer or craftsperson. And even at his passing, he couldn't get the respect that he deserved. Uh, well, that's not going to happen on our watch, okay, with ISFD. The members of ISFD are relatively small in number, but our influence um, is quite the opposite. We are creative partners in a $200 plus billion dollar industry that is global in its influences, um, its manufacturing base, highly creative, highly collaborative, highly competitive as well, and highly meaningful to the end consumer um, regarding their lifestyle and certainly now their very real sense of well-being in this world. With all of those things in mind, the ISFD is going through a time of transition, much like we all have. We are refocusing our efforts on promoting excellence in design. We are trying to give the individual designers an enhanced platform to tactfully make their contributions to the industry evident, to encouraging young design talent, to seriously consider our industry to work in, and to partner with related industry organizations and educational institutions to help tell this amazing story. So hopefully, when all is said and done, end consumers will have beautifully um, we'll have beautiful and functional uh, furnishings. Factory workers will be employed with rewarding jobs. Factory owners will have plenty of orders. And designers will be appropriately rewarded and recognized. And so hopefully none of us will have to be have an epitaph like poor George Bullock that we just saw there tonight. So thank you everybody for being here. Uh, for your support tonight, and now on with the awards. And our co-host, one of our co-hosts, um, I guess that makes sense, I would like to introduce now Bill McLaughlin, editor and chief of Furniture Today. Thank you. Thank you all for coming tonight. I'm not gonna waste two seconds before I introduce my absolutely amazing co-host and our keynote speaker tonight, Libby, please come on up. The amazing, effervescent Libby Langdon. We're gonna recognize some great design tonight. Hi. How are you? I'm good. 
So, okay, people, it's the end of market, but I'm feeling a kind of fabulous energy in here tonight. We've got nominees. We're about to name winners. This is all good it. stuff. Come on, let's, let's get a selfie. Can, oh, all right, we're going to get a selfie. Okay, ready? So, yeah, all, right, all right. You too. Bill, you're going to... All right. Ready? Yes. Okay. You're gonna lift your tongue. <laughs> okay. All right. So everybody. Yay! Nice. Nice. Awesome. Awesome. They're a little tired. Nobody stood out. No. <laughs> No, if they stood up, we wouldn't see them all. Oh, that's true. But now we see you all. All right. All right. Here I'm we go. Step aside. You have some great remarks. I'm gonna I go do. Over here. I do. <laughs> all right, but don't go too far. Thank you so much, John and the International Society of Furniture De De Designers, for asking me to speak tonight at the Pinnacle Awards. I'm truly honored, and being able to celebrate this here at High Point University is extra special for me. Um, I was born and raised here in High Point, and uh, so this just means a lot. So when I come for market, I'm not just coming to shop, I'm also coming home. And on top of it, I actually get to stay with my mom and she makes me breakfast in the morning, so that's kind of awesome. <clears throat> so, what a special night to celebrate the very best in furniture design. This is the fun part, right? It's the furniture market week. We're setting up showrooms. We're styling. We're buying. We're selling. We're showcasing what we do. And we're also stockpiling mental design wells to go out and create beautiful homes filled with fabulous furniture and decor long after market is over. But of course, there are some people's different perceptions of what we do. Some think of it as fluff, a symbol of luxury, living with fabulous furniture pieces and stylish interior design. Is it really important, they ask? As designers, we might hear, it's not rocket science, it's not brain surgery, you're not saving lives. And that is so true. We are not saving lives. But I think there's never been a more exciting time and a more dynamic time to be a designer out in the world creating beautiful products and stylish spaces and even changing lives. Yep, I said it, changing lives. I started my interior design career um, on a makeover TV show. I was a little bit younger then a makeover TV show on Fox called Design Invasion. I'd have 12 hours and $6,000 to make over a room I'd never actually been in person before. On makeover TV, obviously, we start with the very worst looking places. So the before and after transformation, transformation can be as dramatic as possible. Um, exhibit A. Okay, so, <clears throat> No, it's scary, I know. Trust me, <laughs> traveling into people's homes across America is crazy, people. You have no idea. But I was able to figure out this person was looking for a beach-themed space. <laughs> I want you to notice the lighthouses on the black glass and chrome coffee table. And I'd also like for you to notice the lovely black and white dune image hanging over the sofa. Um, they were trying to tell me something. Because, um, you know, nothing says coastal decor like a black leather sectional. <laughs> so this is what it looked like 12 hours later, and it took $6,000. Yes. <laughs> That was all I had to deal with, so I had to work with what was available. Was I able to use some of the fabulous pieces of furniture we're gonna see nominated here tonight? Not so much. Um, but it was basically me, a production assistant, and a U-Haul driving around whatever state we were filming in that week, and I had to beg and plead for any furniture I could get off of furniture store floors. So glamorous, right? 
Okay, I swear, we are gonna elevate the design call here. But again, so this, <laughs> you're, gonna, you're gonna see what this means. It was clearly a down and dirty, low budget makeover show. But I do believe I changed people's lives. At the end of an epic 12 hour work day, to watch a homeowner come in and see their new space for the first time, remembering what it looked like 12 hours earlier, and then they burst into tears and hug me and thank me nonstop. Yep, I knew I was making a difference and it felt fantastic. Happily, my design level moved up in the world as my career grew. Everyone deserves to live well in their homes. When you get quiet and you really listen to what people reveal about themselves and honor what's important to them and create spaces and products for them to have those things, it's a really big deal, no matter the budget. What we are really doing as designers is mining for stories Stories about where someone's come from, where they hope to go, and what they aspire to be. What makes someone's heart sing? What makes us different? What makes us the same? We all want to see ourselves reflected in each other, in our communities, in the world, and especially in our homes. We want to say, this represents me. I see myself in this. This is our work as designers. It's not just about which finish or what cabinet, what metal is used, what fabric pattern or what paint color. It's way more than that. Everyone in this room is a superhero. We've all been given a superpower. We are creators. You see a dining table where there's just a clump of metal and a piece of glass. We can visualize a completed room when there is nothing. We see light where there's darkness. We see what can be when others don't see any potential at all. We visualize how a hollow room can eventually become a stylish space to feed the soul of a family. There is power and goodness in what we have to offer. And I think sometimes we need to wallow in that. The Pinnacle Awards evening is the perfect time to wallow in and celebrate that power and goodness. Tonight, we celebrate the amazing ISFD nominees. They don't see a piece of stone, they see a side table. They don't see a piece of plywood, they see a frame and a comfy chair. They don't see an electrical cable, they see an intricate and chic lighting fixture. They don't see a leaf to a plant. They see how it can be woven into a fabulous fabric. They all have the souls of a maker. They hear the call and they answer. Our furniture, our furniture industry is better because they listen. I joke, <clears throat> actually sometimes I don't joke, um, that uh, oftentimes I think the average consumer thinks there's this really big machine, and you shove a tree trunk in one end, and a sofa pops out the other end. I'm lucky enough to be a part of the furniture industry from two distinct views. One is an interior designer, and one is a product designer. And I understand the incredible commitment it takes, not just from the designer's time and energy to come up with the design, but also the manufacturer's financial commitment and then the long and winding road of the marketing and sales process to finally bring the product to retailers. To be honest, when the product is ready to ship out and the marketing starts, it's really just the beginning. Another thing I think consumers don't understand is how many hands and tradespeople need to touch just one piece of furniture to bring it to life. It's the frame makers, the pattern makers, the wood finishers, the sewers, the cushion fillers, the quality control people, the packaging department, and the list just goes on and on. It doesn't take a village. It takes three factories full of craftswomen and men 
to move just one piece to get it through the shipping department, then to a retailer, and eventually to a consumer. So tonight, we celebrate not just the designers, but also the manufacturers who support, nurture, and foster the ability to bring these designs to life. It's great to have a fabulous vision for a design, but if there's no company to help you realize your vision, it stays just that, a vision that no one can ever use. The nominated designers are here helping us to work on creating tomorrow's homes. And while we never know what tomorrow will bring, we know that beautiful, functional, and smart design will always persevere. We clearly know what it takes and how many people we need to bring all these fabulous home furnishings items to the marketplace. So, I hope we can all believe in the power of great design to affect how people live. Let's give ourselves permission to trust that great design can be inspiring. And let's rejoice and celebrate that wonderful design can change lives. Yep, I said it again. Great design can change lives. Congratulations to all the nominees. Please know you are making a difference and we cannot wait to see what you design next. Thank you. So I have to ask, what did you do with my lighthouses? <laughs> well, I put them in safekeeping for you. Good. <laughs> I, this is my favorite part. Just before we go, you're all winners tonight. There are no losers here. These products are finalists that were selected and winnowed down from many, 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 many products. So just if you don't get an award tonight, keep trying. You guys do amazing work. Um, we really love what you do. Absolutely, absolutely. Should we give out some awards? Yeah, let's do this, come on. All right. Where's our students? Come on. Where's the students? Raise your hand if you're a student. Come on. Nice. All right. You have to carry the energy for, for the rest of us who have been working market forever. <laughs> Come on. All right. Why don't you introduce our, our first presenters? Okay, our first presenters, um, Diane Falvey, Editor-in-Chief, Furniture, Lighting, and Decor Magazine, and Don Brinson, President of the Media Matters and National um, President of IFDA. All right. Don. And they're gonna give out the awards for lighting, accessories, bedroom luxury, and wall decor. Please take it away. Thank you, Bill and Libby. Um, we're going to start with lighting, and our nominees in the lighting category are the Kepler Pyramid Pendant Light by Teddy Ferracho for Golden Lighting, Sase Grande Chandelier by Hiroshi Koshitaka, I hope I didn't mangle that too badly, ISFD for Korean Company, Fungi by Paul DeLays for Verilin, and the Collier 108 Chandelier by Sean Lavin for Visual Comfort and Company. And the winner? And the winner is Collier 108 Chandelier by Sean Lavin for Visual Comfort and Company. Our judges selected this piece as a great design that embraces new technology, one that is beautifully executed and provides an artistic layer while addressing lighting needs. Hi everyone, I'm Sean Lavin. Um, thanks for the nominee and thanks for the award. We're uh, super honored to be uh, just in the same category with uh, all the great designers here. I'm truly uh, fortunate to work for Visual Comfort and be their chief design officer and I'm able to come up with ideas like that. Uh, working for an Andy Singer who really embraces the arts and design and pushes us to 
lead with innovative design is, is just a, an honor. I have my product team here. I have Corbin, Jonesy, and Colin all behind me. Uh, they're the ones who keep me on pace as I'm creating product and working with our great design partners. Um, and again, I just uh, thank you. What an honor. Our second category is accessories. We have the Vika Throw by Johanna Howard for Joanna Howard Home. Yeah. Tetra Illuminated Wall System by Justin Stab, ISFD for Stab Design. And the Revolving Teak Wood Sculpture by Phillips Collection Design Team, ISFD for Phillips Collection. And the winner is the Revolving Teak Wood Sculpture by Phillips Collection Design Team, ISFD for Phillips Collection. Citing the scale of these pieces as what makes them so unique, our judges saw them as wonderful statement pieces that really deliver the drama. Good evening, everyone. Um, this is super exciting for us. We are so proud of this design. It is um, a reflection of the ethos at Phillips Collection, which is to take what nature has to offer and turn it into a work of art. Uh, very little embellishment required to make something like this sing, and the fact that it spins is just the icing on the cake. Um, we're so proud to be in a room with so many accomplished designers and, so, and, and to have the next generation here um, just really excited about where this industry is going and we're super excited, so thank you all. Our next category is bedroom luxury and the nominees are Santa Cruz platform bed by Jim Liu for Greenington Fine Bamboo Furniture the Seche Woven Wing Bed by Abby Lane, ISFD for Jonathan Charles Furniture. The Wanderlust Bedroom by Michelle De La Rosa, ISFD for Caracol. The Crescendo Bedroom by Anina Remgen, ISFD for Caracol. And the Finn Bedroom Collection 211 by ART Design Team, ISFD for ART Furniture. And the winner is Wanderlust Bedroom by Michelle De La Rosa, ISFD for Caracol. Impressed by the precise attention to detail, from the delicate etching of the hardware to the fluidity of the smooth curves, our judges praised this bedroom suit as an outstanding design with a great combination of elements and material. I only need to clarify, I am no Michelle De La Rosa. <laughs> she is actually a designer who has recently left our company, but her great talent um, lives on, obviously, and her spirit as a contributing member of our company and our design ethos um, will continue on with the company for a very long time. And the leadership um, of our current team is captured in the desire to create the very things um, that were addressed in making a more beautiful home. And we appreciate this honor. We welcome the new students. Um, the future is yours, and we desperately need your help because if you look around, there's a lot of old people in this room. <laughs> we need the next generation. We need you here. We need your energy. So thank you very much to the judges. Thank you for this honor, and please be our future. And in wall decor, we have Fashion Faces Wall Art Large by Julie Phillips, ISFD, and Phillips Collection Design Team, ISFD for Phillips Collection. Cherry Blossom Mirror by Jamie Merida for Chelsea House. 
and Venna Wall Mirrors by Amy Kurtzner, ISFD, for Curry and Company. And the winner is Fashion Faces Wall Art Large by Julie Phillips, ISFD, and Phillips Design Team, ISFD, for Phillips Collection. Our judges fell in love with the way this fun and fanciful piece creates an instant human connection that is playful and glamorous. What a treat it is to wake up every morning to this fashion face. Julie Phillips cut her hair short and rocked it. And that was the inspiration and the design for this wonderful accessory. Well, that was fun. We probably should have said this at the beginning. When you come up and get your award, we're gonna pose you in the center of the stage. So come right on up. <laughs> Just take a minute to breathe it all in. Look out at this great crowd. Yes, yes. So, you, you wanna, wanna? You go. Okay. <laughs> Our next presenters, we, we've never done this before together, it's the first time. <laughs> Our next presenters, Mark Schumacher, CEO of the Home Furnishings Association, and Jay Anna Mize, Vice President of Fashion Snoops. Oh. Okay, and they will be introducing occasional storage, Definitely. leather upholstery, entertainment furniture, and home office. Thank you. Um, I, I, I just want to say something really, really quickly, and especially for those that have never been to this event. Um, the one thing you're going to notice about all of us presenting here tonight is that we represent all the associations in our industry and a number of fabulous organizations and companies like Fashion Snoops. Um, this, yes. Give it up. Ooh. And for the pink suit, give it up, please, for the pink suit. Come on. You're sweet. It's not about me. It's about I was, me. <laughs> I was told I couldn't wear pink tonight. Now I, I know why. I was like, um, I asked if you wanted to switch suits. But, but here's my point. My point is, is that as you see us all up here, it's not by mistake. It's because we support furniture design, not just this organization, but we understand that furniture design is at the center of everything. So this is unusual. There's all these events at market. This is the only one where you'll see all of us represented up here in a big way to put our two cents in here and our support. So I just wanted to mention that. Okay? Sorry. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> all right, we're gonna start with occasional storage is our first category. And here are the nominees. The Hannah Console by Jim Liu for Greenington Fine Bamboo Furniture. Trianon Entertainment Credenza Bernhardt Case Goods Design Team for Bernhardt. The Sergio Bar Cabinet by Amy Kersner, ISFD for Curry and Company. And Theseus by Anina Fremgen, ISD, FD for Caracol. And the winner is Theseus by Anna Fremgen. With its simple and elegant design, incorporating a classic motif, this piece reminded our judges of the Roaring Twenties. They were most impressed, though, that this beautiful combination of materials and colors delivers tons of function. Hello, everyone. Um, first, I'd like to thank ISFD for making Pinnacle happen every year. And then I'd also have to give credit to KCAD, my alma mater, for, <laughs> for being a, a bronze sponsor, as well as preparing me for this industry. I mean, it feels like only yesterday I was sketching in a classroom and freaking out over deadlines, and now I'm freaking out over markets. You know, the game has changed. So I just, it's been such an honor and an adventure to design for Caracol under the House of Marcor brand, and I mean, I'm, I love it. So thank you. <laughs> Up next, we'll be doing leather upholstery. So we're looking at the Alaya Chair by Four Hands Product Design Team for Four Hands. The Spago Swivel by Cozia USA Design Team for Cozia USA. And the Oakley Sling Chair by Paul Deleuze for Varellen. And our winner is, this is the fun part, 
The Oakley Sling Cheer by Paul DeLays for Varelli. In this piece, our judges saw a modern version of the Victorian campaign chair with a truly contemporary twist. They loved its fresh take on a favorite form and the way the leather looks like it's suspended in air. Thank you. As said earlier, it takes a village, and who else to better talk about the Varel in the village than uh, Tom Varel? Oh. <laughs> Good evening. It does take a village. We've been around the block for about 45 markets. It's starting to happen, and we just get a great following. The audience is amazing. Um, it just, it's a joy. We do our thing and we're sticking to it one step at a time, so thank you again. All right, our next category is entertainment furniture. The nominee, <laughs> let me try that again. Our next category is entertainment furniture. There we go. <laughs> All right, cool. <laughs> the nominees are Quietin by Bruce Schuttinger, ISFD for Mozart, Inc. Modulum Entertainment Credenza by Bernhardt Case Goods Design Team for Bernhardt Furniture. Interval Media and Storage Cabinets, Matthew Weatherly and Al Glass for BDI. And also the Enrico Entertainment Center, Eros Angelini for Bellini, Modern Living. And the winner is... The Enrico Entertainment Center by Eros Angelini for Bellini Modern Living. In selecting this piece, the judges were drawn to its wonderfully modern design, but thought its functionality, like built-in sockets and the ability for the remote to work through closed doors, really makes it stand out. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. This is a great honor. And I'm going to accept this on behalf of our designer who's sleeping in Italy right now. So I'm going to take it and call him later and tell him he won. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. And next, we'll be discussing the home office. Woo! Yeah. I know it's one of our most did used I, places in the home. I, I think I got that wrong. I'm sorry. <laughs> Our first up is Corridor L Desk by Matthew Weatherly, ISFD for BDI. The Waterfall Desk with Acrylic Leg by Philips Collection Design Team, ISFD for Philips Collection. Mo Modulum Home Office by Bernhardt Case Goods Design Team for Bernhardt Furniture. The Vanity Desk by Marissa Brown for Stickley and the Santa Cruz Writing Desk by Jim Liu for Greenington Fine Bamboo Furniture. And the winner is the Corridor L Desk, Matthew Weatherly, ISFD for BDI. Our judges cited this piece as an example of how all office needs can be taken into consideration without compromising visual appeal. They love that it can be configured with a desk on the left or the right side, and that the closed cabinet can be floated as a decorative element, and that it cleanly hides away items like the printer and wires. Uh, good evening. Um, it's a, uh, wonderful to be here sharing this moment with all of you. Um, I want to give a quick shout out to the BDI product development team. Uh, they're an awesome team and they do a wonderful job and all of this would not be possible without them. So, um, thank you all. All right, students. We are old. We need glasses. You don't. Okay, here we go. Um, our next presenters, Andy Counts, CEO, American Home Furnishings Alliance, 
and Emily Boyst, Vice President of With It. Welcome. And they will be presenting Dining Luxury and Occasional Tables Luxury. Woohoo! Woo. Yes. All right, let's start with Dining Luxury. We have the Martine Collection, Sunburst Dining Table, Dining Chairs, and Server by Marissa Brown, ISFD for Stickley. Great Expectations Dining Room by Michelle De La Rosa, ISFD for Caracol. Full Score Dining Room by Caracol Design Team, ISFD for Caracol. The Modulum Dining Room by Bernhardt Case Goods Design Team for Bernhardt Furniture. And last but not least, CO Collection by Brian Boggs, ISFD for Brian Boggs Chairmakers, Inc. Drum roll, please. The winner is the Full Score Dining Room by Caracol Design Team, ISFD for Caracol. For our judges, this refreshing take on traditional furniture design expresses the essence of glamour. And they loved that the influence of the musical instrument shines through. Uh, well, we thank you for this. Um, it seems to uh, tradition never dies. It's just how you can reinvent it. And this is a chair that Anina had put forward. We had uh, another outside designer help with this. Uh, it's just the, our manufacturing at Marcor, everything put together. This is one of these things of reinventing tradition, and I'm glad you, and I'm happy that you recognized it. Thank you. Our next category will be Occasional Tables Luxury. The finalists are Brisbane Tables by Paul DeLace for Verillon. The Formentera Coffee Table by Paul DeLace for Verillon. The Soma Lift Tables by Jeff Barr, ISFD for BDI. The Cantilevered Console Table by Phillips Collection Design Team, ISFD for Phillips Collection. And the Aura Occasional Table Group by Bernhardt Case Goods Design Team for Bernhardt Furniture. And the winner is, take that drum, bolt, drum roll back if you will. Thank you. The Aura Occasional Table Group by Bernhardt Case Goods Design Team for Bernhardt Furniture. In this piece, our judges found a brilliant display of light and texture and a great use of materials intricately carved and beautifully executed. And they agreed that it is sure to make a statement. Thank you for the nomination. Thank you for the Bernard design team and the whole family at Bernard. It's quite an honor. Thank you. Bet you didn't know it was going to be interactive, right? <laughs> Give me a drum roll. Now we have another interaction. If you are a nominee tonight, would you do us a favor, please? Just stand up. I know it's market. I know you're tired. Yes. Please stand up. Let's see nominees. All right. Now, students in the back of the room, these are the rock stars of our industry. Yes. This is the Academy Awards, and these are your stars. Take a minute, go and meet them. They yes. love to talk about what they do. I know, we talk to them all the time. They love to talk to you about this stuff. I didn't mean it that way. <laughs> but please, if you don't go home with a pocket full of business cards, you didn't make the most of your trip. These are wonderful, brilliant people. Pick their brains. Okay, sorry. You go. Oh. I like it. All right. So, our next presenters. Playing the role of Ray Allegreza tonight is John Pri Pinion, President of International Home Furnishings Representatives Association, and playing herself, Caitlin Peterson, Editor-in-Chief of Business of Home. <laughs> And the categories they'll be announcing, stationary upholstery, yeah. luxury, <laughs> motion upholstery, 
and outdoor. You've got the better acting gig tonight. <laughs> In the stationary upholstery category for luxury, we have as nominees, opening act by Christopher San Domenico, ISFD for Caracol. Live Wire by Christopher San Domenico, ISFD for Caracol. The Aries Swivel Chair by Bernhardt Upholstery Design Team for Bernhardt Furniture. And the Ella XL Sofa by Paul Delez for Varellen. And the winner is Live Wire by Christopher San, San Domenico, ISFD for Caracol. Our judges hailed this as a sculptural masterpiece. Its expertly integrated design elements express architectural influences in creating a form that is graceful and sleek. Okay. Um, well, thanks for <laughs> recognizing this thing. This is the outdoor indoor chair, this thing that couldn't be made. Um, one of these, right? It's one that you keep on pushing forward for and you can make it. I have to thank, well, I kind of pushed it. I was a little selfish about putting it forward, but um, our manufacturers and our team. Um, you hit the nail on the head and we as furniture designers make unique items and we, we push ourselves to make the best piece of furniture we can, but without the interior designers, and placing it in rooms, this just is nothing. So thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. And for the category of motion upholstery, Brookstone Mach 9 by Cozia USA Design Group for Cozia USA. Jupiter Swivel Chair by David Phoenix for Hickory Chair. Montrose Palace Motion Sofa by Bonehart Upholstery Design Team for, des for Bonehart Furniture. And the winner is Montrose Power Motion Sofa by the Bernhardt Upholstery Design Team for Bernhardt Furniture. For our judges, this piece really elevates the motion category by integrating all of the wanted technology without compromising on visual appeal. So for most of you that may know Alex Bernhardt Jr., uh, motion furniture wasn't always his favorite, but he did know how important a category it was. And he, he asked us to design motion that uh, looked like beautiful stationery. And this is a validation of maybe we did that. So thank you all very much for the recognition. In the outdoor category, our nominees are Zuma by John Caldwell, ISFD for Texacraft, the Trueville Outdoor Dining Table by Bernhardt Case Goods Design Team for Bernhardt Furniture, and the Foglia Daybed by Carlo Basso, ISFD for CV Tropicalia. And the winner is Foglia Daybed by Carlo Basso, ISFD for CV Tropicalia. Our judges saw the rounded forms within a beefy square post as spot-on trend without being derivative. They loved its tactile and sensible qualities and saw that it truly enhances the natural surroundings of the outdoor space. I'd like to thank you all from, um, I, I had a nice call from Carlo. He's in Italy. He thanks, graciously thanks you all. Blew, it blew his mind. He said, even if I, yeah, I can't even conceive that I could win, but if I do, please thank everyone. and Please wish the students good success in their journey to a career in design in this industry. So on behalf of Carlo, thank you. So our next presenters are Jane Dagme, Managing Director of HPXD, High Point by Design, and 
Carrie Dillon, Managing Director of the International Textile Alliance, and they're going to be presenting Home Textiles Print, Home Textiles Woven, and Floor Coverings, Rugs. Hi, everyone. Um, so for the Home Textiles Print category, we have On the Way, Color Atlantic by Tanabana Studio for Trevi Fabrics. Roulade, Color, Rose Leaf by Lee Jova Studio Design Team for Kravit Inc. Symphony, Emerald by Corey Damon Jenkins for Kravit Inc. Mineral on Eclipse Ombre Pillow by Aviva Stanoff for Aviva Stanoff Designs. Yes. Yeah. And the envelope. You're going to do it, right? Okay. Let's see. The winner is... On the Way Color Atlantic by Tanavana Studio for Trevi Fabrics. With its rich, captivating color and incredible detail, this textile impressed our judges as an exquisite print that also represents a great value. Wow, I did not think I would be standing here right now. Um, if you'd have told me this two years ago, I would have never believed it. Um, we started this company, it's kind of from the ground up, and it's been a roller coaster ever since. And our new hobby is shopping for artwork, and our goal is to create color and to support the independent artists. And I guess we've done a good job at it, so thank you so much for this. Home Textiles Woven, you go first. All right. We have Stitch, colored 19306 by Brandy Evans Moore for Termolst Global Textile Alliance. Hakiro, color sandstone by Lindsay Rogers for Valdez Weavers. Boldini, color sandstone by Wesley Mancini, Ed Rahacek, and Linda Alley for Valdez Weavers circa 1801. And Farah, color brigade by Glenn Reed for STI Revolution Fabrics. And the winner, Stitch, color 19306 by Brandy Evans Moore, Termals. Citing this piece as very on trend with the craft movement, our judges love the colorway and the way the coarse weave adds texture. I'm usually behind the scenes as a textile designer, so I'm not really used to being in front of everyone. Um, I have a very strong support team. Uh, in November, please come see us at Termolst for Interwoven. I'd like to see all of you. Um, so after 18 years of being in this industry as a fabric designer, this is pretty awesome for me, so thank you. For floor coverings, we have Harmon by Kate Lester and the JL product development team for Jaipur Living. Margot by Laloy Design Studio for Laloy. Norrison Scroll Area Rug Gray Shadow by Norrison Design Team for Norrison. And Naturals Tobago by JL product development team for Jaipur Living. Yes. And, and the winner is Norrison Scroll Area Rug, Gray, gray Shadow, shadow. Norrison Design Team. Noting that the gray palette makes it applicable to many interiors, our judges love the way this piece adds playful whimsy to any room. Good evening, everybody. Uh, it's great to be here tonight and definitely an honor to win this. We want to congratulate everybody else, uh, the other finalists in our category, too, um, and just say how fortunate we are to be part of this industry with so many inspiring creative professionals that are making beautiful products every day. Thank you. It's even more impressive, 30 feet high. <laughs> it's a big rim. 
It is. How's the view from out there? <laughs> okay, I have to tell you, we have the best view because we get to see the faces of the winners when their names are announced. And I have to tell you, it's such a wonderful thing to see people's faces when the work that they've done for so many years and the struggles all of a sudden comes to fruition and you see that just light explode from their eyes. Um, congratulations to you all, just wonderful. We're, we're just so grateful to, to be here and see that. Absolutely. So we wanna welcome our next presenters, Nancy Fire, founder Nancy Fire Designs and co-founder Design Works International and Patty Carpenter, Global Trend Ambassador. They're gonna be, yes, they're gonna be presenting um, Maker Designer, Student Award, and the Green Leaf Award. Is the bar still open? <laughs> Can we take you all home with us? This is fabulous. <laughs> uh, so, great to be with you, and we are going to be um, announcing the nominees for Maker Designer. And the first in our category is Lily by Orfeo Quagata for Studio Orfeo Quagliata. And next up is uh, Separatrix by Bruce M. Um, uh, Schuttenreier, ISFD for Mozart Inc. Our third is Shelf of Drawers by Jeremy Camilla, ISFD for Camilla Design Furniture. And next is Anvil by Erica Cross for Erica Cross Studios. And last but not least, The Occasional Chair by Joshua Saltman for Saltman by Hand. Ready? And the and winner, the winner is, is Shelf of Drawers by Jeremy Camilla for Camilla Furniture. The judges had never seen a piece like this before, making it truly one of a kind. They were impressed with the exquisite wood selection, loved how the shelves are integrated with the drawers, and that the piece is both functional and elegant. Hey, thank you for this honor. I would uh, like to thank my wife. I'd like to thank YouTube. And <laughs> I, I guess I'm, I'd like to thank the Academy as well. <laughs> thank you. So the next award is a student award. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, look out. Okay. <laughs> Okay. All, right. All, right. All right, this was not on the program. Come on, Don. I'm Tom Conley with the High Point Market Authority. This is the lovely and talented Don Brinson with the Media Matters. In fact, Don recently became the president of Media Matters, so congratulations. <laughs> We uh, would like to be joined by a couple other folks up here. Steve, you want to come up? Liz, you want to come up, please? Where's Steve? There he is. Liz, where's Liz? And now, last but not least, John Conrad, come up here. So John, John, just stand there. Just stand there. Stand there. Just, just stand there. Stand there and take it like a man, John, for the first time in your life. All right, so as most of you who most of you who know John, he's a man of many words, so I have a few to add to the confusion. Um, about eight years ago, I met a young Chinese entrepreneur at market. He was helping a few companies sell into China. He believed in his mission of selling US products into China because he worked for General Motors and Delphi. Those of you who don't know, that's an automotive parts supplier. And it was a perfect match to the mission of the High Point Market Authority. After a few months of negotiation, the Market Authority signed Jack Kong and his company Magus to represent us in China. The initial tasks were very straightforward. Letters of invitation, pre-registration, helping to qualify attendees, and some translation services. But since the mission of the market 
authority is to promote all future furniture buyers to attend market. I knew there was much more that we could do in China. Remember, this is eight years ago. Um, wow, how things have changed. So Jack and I worked on a multi-year plan to find ways to not only promote the high point market, but also to explain and promote American design, interior design and furniture design. We decided to start with product design and eventually move to interior design. In order to do that, we needed the help and cooperation of the then American Society of Furniture Designers, and thus started a long partnership and friendship with John Conrad. The stops and starts and conversations with the Chinese government, associations, building owners, retailers, schools, and, as, some, and as, as well as some American design schools and designers themselves and manufacturers. Those are far too, nu too numerous to mention tonight, but there was a lot of work that was put in. Suffice it to say, the first order of business was, was a name change to the International Society of Furniture Designers. That's how we got the name tonight. This was followed by many trips to China and many trips to High Point by the Chinese. Money was always a problem. We finally found a partnership concept that would help fund ISFD while promoting good design and market attendance. One of the main aspects of the plan focused on a school in Shenzhen for both product design and interior designer. Unfortunately, Trump's tariffs and the, the COVID-19 pandemic put an, ed an end to everything in China. Our hopes were really dashed. But it didn't dent John's commitment to excellence in design and the nurturing of student designers into the home furnishings industry. So it is only fitting that tonight, as we celebrate John's service to our industry and especially to ISFD, that we name the Student Design Award in John's honor. Go on. For 20 years, I had the pleasure of helping administer the coveted Celia Moe Scholarship Program on behalf of Larry Moe and the Moe family. We sought out the most extraordinary and exemplary students in all facets of our industry, including product design, providing them with full tuition scholarships. It was Mr. Moe's personal passion and belief that young design talent would power our future as an industry but those young people needed more than money. They needed mentors, advocates, and industry guides to help propel them into the leaders Larry envisioned. Many of them have succeeded in that endeavor and are sitting in this room tonight. Um, at least one of them has just won a Pinnacle Award, too. Um, this is where my path and John's first intersected. When we talked about how ISFD could support these students, John graciously made important introductions. He talked candidly with our scholars about the industry. He had them attend the Pinnacle Awards to be recognized and lauded. He always said yes. But then he always does say yes whenever there's an opportunity to engage with expiring young designers, no matter what else he has on his plate. He goes to trade shows, fairs, conferences, and summits where students and young designers participate. New York, Atlanta, here in High Point, and even as Tom mentioned, internationally. He communicates directly, and sometimes pointedly, with colleges and universities, promoting furniture design and the importance of the student industry connection. He collaborates with other organizations to promote and uplift student designers. ISFD's own student scholarship has grown in prominence under John's guidance, bringing meaningful financial resources to exceptional students, many of whom are now working as professional designers for companies you recognize. The Innovation and Design Competition in its second year is another brainchild of John's and others, honoring both professional makers and artisans, but students too. Moreover, John made sure the way innovation and design plays out ensures that students have the opportunity to begin to build professional networks 
and that companies and design firms are actively participating with the student finalists and winners. If you look at the ISFD website, there's a tab for opportunities in the navigation. Four options drop down, all of which pertain to students. Mentorship, internship, portfolios, and even the job board give young designers resources and access. Which leads us tonight to the Student Pinnacle Award that John created in 2014 to help prepare design students for a career in our industry. Being selected as a finalist for this award is thrilling. Winning one can be the rocket fuel needed to launch an impressive career. Some of you know what that feels like, and some of you benefit professionally from the gift of working with a previous winner of a Student Pinnacle Award. Whichever side of the equation you're on, it's John you have to thank. John's imprint on our industry is impressive. The work he has done will impact the profession and students for years to come. So now I'd like to ask Liz Moore, Chairman of the Board of ISFD, and Steve Wilcox, President of the Board of ISFD, for a special presentation. John, thank you, Tom. When I was a design student at Kendall College of Art and Design, I so look forward to this event every year. Maybe that's because it was a free dinner and a lot of wine. <laughs> I soon realized all the opportunities that ISFD would expose me to and how special it would be working with John. Naming the Student Pinnacle Award after John just made sense. He truly cares about the design students, their future, and he cares about the furniture industry and its future. Lastly, here's to Shirley for generously sharing John with ISFD for all these years. Cheers to you. <laughs> and here's Steve. In my uh, earlier comments, I made a subtle hint that there was transition in the air. So I want to say this very clearly and openly that uh, Mr. Conrad here will be retiring soon. And we have more news in the future, but this is John's moment right now. So please congratulate him on a job well done. Now, someone else on stage also is retiring, and I just want to share this as, as an anecdote to the character of these gentlemen. Um, we have one student uh, at the Kendall College of Art and Design who is now graduated, but she is, I would not say, the most outgoing student. And she became an intern at the International Society of Furniture Designers. And so she is working with John and learning the industry and working remotely, etc. And I drive down from Michigan most of the time to the show and I pull into the, the Bean and Stock Library for the board meeting or wherever it's located. And I get on the phone and I say, John, it's Steve, I'm here, where are you? And I find out that John Conrad and Tom Conley are driving the intern around High Point themselves, showing this student the city and the show. That just shows you their commitment to this industry, the, to the people who are carrying it forward. So I just want again, everybody please stand and give both of them a round of applause. Clemped. That never happens. That never happens. And everybody knows me. I'm going to mention Jason. Ah, love you too, guys. Jason Phillips was also a major responsibility for creating the, the first student uh, pinnacle. And kudos to you, buddy. You're, you're, a, you're a rock star in this industry. So thank you for your support and friendship. Thank you all for your support and friendship. This uh, Industry has been very good to me for 48 years, and uh, it's, 
it's, a, it's my pleasure to connect people to people and see careers po- prosper. It's, it's always been that way, and it will always continue that way. So thank you all for this wonderful uh, gift. Thank you. And Nancy and Patty, thanks for being such good sports and standing aside and waiting and all that. We really appreciate that. We had a Zoom call with Nancy and Patty, and they said, gosh, that's a really good idea. Oh, stop. (laughs) All right. On with the show. Patty, Nancy, please. Well, we are so excited to actually introduce the nominees for the first ever John Conrad Student Pinnacle Award. First up for the, I got to glasses off, for the Blum Chair uh, by Pedro Sandova, ISFD for University of Houston. Yes. Second up is Magni Club Chair by Corey Dyson for Appalachian State University. Next is Cecilia by Gabriela Sandia for uh, um, uh, Savannah College of Art and Design. (laughs) And then next we have The Hooked Table by Milan Boulard for Savannah College of Art and Design. And last up, Manufacturer's Collection by Jake Hansen and Joe uh, Donaske, ISFD for Kendall College of Art and Design. Ready? Yeah. And the winner is... A Blum Blum Chair Chair. by Pedro Sandoval, ISFD for University of Houston. (laughs) Our judges saw this piece as evocative of Bertoia without being derivative and thought it demonstrates deep understanding of ergonomics, manufacturing, and shipping. Wow. Uh, Well, I'm full of adrenaline right now. (laughs) <laughs> um, I got nothing. Uh, first of all, I just want to thank God for uh, putting me here in the first place. Uh, and then um, I want to thank my professor, Jeff Fang and Adam Wells, uh, for pushing me to you know, make this chair and design the chair. Uh, without them, I wouldn't have gotten it here. And, uh, and, and, thank, uh, and thank, thank you all. Thank, thank you, John. Yeah. <laughs> And our last set of awards is for the Greenleaf Award. And the first is to Hannah, Con- the first nominee is Hannah Consol by Jim Liu for Gre- Greenington Fine Bamboo Furniture. Next up, uh, for Lafayette by Ron Henderson uh, for Valerlu's LLC. And last but not least is the Cantilever Console Table by Phillips Collection Design Team for Phillips Collection. Drum roll. (laughs) And the winner is the Green Leaf Award goes to Hannah Consol, sorry, by Jim (laughs) Liu. (laughs) The judges love the design of this piece and that it was made from a highly renewable material harvested responsibly. They were also impressed that the surface is not a stain, but created by heat, steam, and pressure. Looking beyond the product to the process by which it is made, they found a good analysis and description of carbon emissions reduction, local sourcing, and elimination of waste. Thank you all for being here, for stay so long. <laughs> Thank you for all the nominees. Thank you for the judges. And when we start this project, we talk about, oh, what's the idea of sustainable furniture? It's not only about the materials. It's also about the footprint, also about the manufacturing process. And, you know, we walk through all the way from harvesting bamboo to the final product to the market here. And uh, it's a challenging and a fun process, and I'm uh, appreciative for being a part of it. 
and um, something has been changed, something won't change. And we can see people working together all around the world and making a better and a greener world. Thank you all. Thank you. Before we give out our last award of the night, I'd just like to ask at the conclusion of our program tonight, if all of the winners would come up to the stage, we'd like to get a picture of all of you with your awards. I know sometimes when things are over, people want to rush and get home. You've all worked very hard. You've earned this. Please take a moment. Come on up on the stage. Libby, why don't yes. you introduce our next award? Our final presenter is the very well-known Bob Marisich, CEO of the IMC and he will be presenting the award for major collections. Uh, Tom and Don, that was very clever. Now you gotta have John come back every year to give the student, he can't, he can't, he can't get away. Congratulations, Don, That's, you're a difference maker. Um, Damn, there are a lot of old people in the audience. <laughs> and I thought, whoever said 45 markets, that's a good start. Um, but, you know, looking back and then looking forward, the opportunity for great design has never been better. And that opportunity isn't just a commercial one. The opportunity with sustainability and diversity just so much ahead of you. Couldn't be more energized by what I see and interact with tonight. Also, as we talk about major collections, it is Libby a celebration of great design, but great manufacturers. And you think about bringing out these major collections, particularly in the context of these times, developing it, manufacturing it, making samples during COVID. This is really a special year. So proudly, all of these are exceptional companies and exceptional designers. The nominees are the Signature Metropolitan Living Room, Dining Room, and Bedroom by Caracol Design Team, ISFD for Caracol. The Big Sky Collection by Dudley Moore, ISFD, Lenny Chapman, ISFD, for Hooker Furniture Design Team for Hooker Furniture. Positano Collection by David Phoenix for Hickory Chair, and Casa Paros Collection by Bernhardt Case Goods Design Team and Otto and Moore Design Team, ISFD, for Bernhardt Furniture. And the winner is Casa Paros Collection by Bernhardt Case Goods Design Team and Otto Moore Design Team. Here our judges love the different shapes and the play with dimension and scale, as well as the great combination of textures and materials. Overall, they saw it as an excellent representation of the primitive design movement. Thank you so much. This is a great honor. We enjoy our collaboration with the Bernhardt design team, and we thank Alex Bernhardt Jr. for his vision as always. It's always a joy, and we love it. Thank you. I, I want to thank Laura and uh, Lenny and, the, and our, our entire team, and also the Bernhardt team. And particularly, I want to thank John Conrad and Tom Conley for their service to our industry. We're all better off because of their generosity and spirit towards the industry and as a whole. So we will miss them very much, but we shall proceed. And in Tom Varellen's fa famous words, we'll keep it moving. Or that's not yet quite right, but anyway, <laughs> we'll keep doing our thing. We'll keep doing our thing. Well, that's sad. It's over. Almost. Is Two more things. Yeah, go. Yeah? Okay. yeah? How about giving everybody a round of applause for their hard work? Yes. All of our nominees. All of our winners. Oh, come on. <laughs> Thank you.
And now, please come up on stage if you want and get your picture taken with the now very famous and immortalized John Conrad. Congrats to all our winners. What a great night. We're going to see you next year. Thank you.